So today's gonna be exciting. I'm excited. We're working on derby cars. We're on our natural habitat. If you didn't watch the last video, you should have. We introduced you to our 1974 Chevy Impala two door glass house. Look at the derby car. Oh, look at it. All right, so Case just got back from the Boise area. We had this car built up in Washington State from my good friend Zach. We don't have time. We've got a derby coming up that's super, super important. Me, Matt, Paul, and Rudy are gonna destroy kings of something. We really appreciate Case making the drive. He brought me back an LS. It's a 6L out of a 2018 Chevrolet Silverado. And that motor is gonna go in the Toyota. I think Lincoln's obsessed already in his blood. So we're gonna be working on this. But we've got our Buick that we won Manti's Demolition. We won St. Pete County Fair Demolition Derby in 2022. It's been parked out back all winter. So we winterized it last year, but now we need to bring it in and we need to get that car stripped out because all those parts need to go into this car right here. Now, if you're new to the channel, we have been called out to run a four on four team style derby at the Hurricane Utah Derby this Saturday, April 22nd. Be there or be square. It's gonna be me, Matt's Off-Road Recovery, Fab Rats, and Rudy's Adventure and Designs. Four man team show against Gladiators of Steel. We're gonna go out there and hopefully we can beat them. You don't wanna stick around because if we beat them, we might just put on a show for you between the four of us. May the best man win. Hillbilly's gonna get this frame out of our way and we're gonna see if the old derby car will start. I'm not a smart man, but I like to leave all my stuff in the derby car over the winter so that in the springtime, I know right where it's at. So I got my helmet, my knee pad, my jacket, everything. Then I don't have to try to search and remember where I put it. That's thinking with your head. Come on! Come on, old girl! Come on! You just need a better battery. It might be messed up from last season. All right, so we're gonna grab another battery, get this thing to turn over a little bit faster. I absolutely love the way that makes my brain rattle. Absolutely love it. There's nothing better than an LS making your brain hurt. Let's see if this old girl will drive herself out. Water. What the? It's called full of water. So we'll drain it out and put new oil in it. So we're probably not driving it back there. Why? You don't want to uh, lose your bottom end because it's water, it's not oil. And it's a thick, creamy water. Let's just go drain it out. We need to drag it, go drain the oil, put fresh oil in it, and start it again before, before we, we start stripping it again. So my oil, my, uh, oil fill cap looks like in the Bronx Star. Nice. Here it comes. Holy crap. Oil hasn't even started coming out yet. No wonder it's, it sounds like a bearing's trying to take flight and leave. I really don't even think there's oil in that. Taste it. You oh, taste you drink it. it. This, this is your type of water consumption. Look at that. That is so bad. We shouldn't have started it. For next time, check your oil before you start it. There you go, kids. Check your oil before you start derby motors that have sat all winter. So I can see some residue on the side of the block. So we're gonna check to see if it's a cracked block or if it's from the cracked head. That's a block. Frozen and cracked block. That is what it looks like when water mixes with oil. <laughs> So in order to fill the motor up with oil, we got to get to the back of that valve cover. There's a hood in the way. So we're going to get the hood all pulled off. Look at that. Now that we can see all the goodies, so we're going to put oil in it, try to get all the water and moisture out of it, and then we're going to get it up. We are going to get it up to temperature and see if we can even run this thing. Most likely it's not going to get a radiator. It won't be the first time I've ran without a radiator. The motor's junk, it needs a new block. So at this point, we have nothing to lose. Except for the derby. I've never, I haven't actually lost due to no water in my radiator. I've lost due to way other things. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, steering usually. Transmission. Transmission mostly. Here's a little life hack. I'll show you how to make yourself a oil funnel when you don't have a funnel. Use a very, very dull knife and cut the top off and try to cut your arm. That's why you go by the saying, cut towards your buddy, not your body. So you want to cut your buddy? Better than cutting yourself, because it doesn't hurt. Hillbilly's Wisdom 101. All right, we're going to see if it'll turn over. All right, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to crank it and get some oil going into the oil pump before we actually ignite it. Here we go. <laughs> We definitely hear a tick, so we're gonna let it run and lift it up on the hoist. Powder mouth broken. So what we're trying to do here is cook the water out of this thing. The noise gets quieter as the RPMs go up. So I'm thinking it's a flex plate hitting. To me, it sounds like it's a consistent noise wherever you're at. Hillbilly thinks it's the front cylinder. He thinks that at the higher RPMs, the rod doesn't have time to knock. Correct, or you just can't hear it over the higher RPMs. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna run it again for a second, we'll do like one more minute. We'll lift it up, we'll drain the oil, we'll do another oil change, we'll do the same thing. We'll get it super hot, get it cooking, trying to boil that water out of it. We're not putting our expensive oil in until we're ready. So what we can do, Robbie, is we can draw the transmission out, look at the flex plate, if everything looks okay, start it again, to see if the noise is still there or if it was something from the flex plate back that's causing it to do that. It's not a bad idea. It's not a great oh. idea, but it's not a bad one. So I'll start draining the oil, you start pulling the drive shaft, just weld those welds back on. We are going to attempt to run it with no transmission. That way we can see if the torque converter is pushing the flex plate and actually making that tick noise. Here it comes. Fresh, clean oil. Look at that water, dude. Done. Oh. There's one drive line. Well, it's almost out. Yeah, it's out! $226 worth of oil. $226? Round two. Fight! Fire! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna leave this where it's at. We're gonna take the transmission out of it, put the starter back on. We're gonna start this thing with no transmission. See if my theory of the flex plate is correct. Oh, look at this! This is the gas tankomatic filler 10,000. Have you ever seen a better gas tank filler? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's called redneck ingenuity. People need to answer when I call them. What's up, Roberto? Hello, smarter than me, human. Why am I smarter than you? Last year, when I put my LS in this Buick, yes. did it have a click noise? Did we think it had some sort of a, like, knock noise? It does run in my mind that there was something. Okay. I know one of the heads is cracked. Well, and, well, the block's cracked, too, now. Anyway, we dumped about 3,000 gallons of water out of the bottom end today. Uh oh yeah, so that's that's super cool, but it runs really well. So if I remember, I almost like a lifter kick or something. Other than it's solid lifters, so it can't be a lifter. Oh, but okay. but same okay. thing. I'm thinking it's a flex plate. We're gonna pull the transmission off and run it. I thought in my brain that it had a noise last year, so that's why I asked you. If I remember, I right, yeah, there was something. Okay. There was something. The most important question of all: Will you be my pit chief at the demolition derby on April twenty second, two thousand twenty three? Hell yes. <laughs> he yes. said yes. We chain along these rear ends in and put wrap chain around, up around the hump and back to the axle so that way you don't have much suspension. I just know I've always done it for Robbie. We're cutting the cross member out of the frame rails to get the transmission out. <laughs> Everything is like form fitted around the transmission now. Look how bent this bar is. Is it not supposed to be bent? No, it's supposed to be straight. The transmission jack was not sitting flat. Whose derby car is this? It's daddy's. 
excited to watch him derby. Let me get this one out. Hey, Lincoln. Lincoln. Hey, no, no, no. Oh, he's ruining his new clothes. Whoa. All right, I'm, I'm out. It didn't even budge. Oh. We're gonna start the LS and listen to it. Well, I sent a video to my friend Joker. He thinks it's gonna be catastrophic. At this point, so what? If it makes it 15 minutes, great. Talk to Case. He thinks he remembers the sound last year before Manti's. I think I remember the sound before Manti. We built it to Derby. Might as well ruin it. We'll go down in a ball of glory. Well, let's start it and see what it does. <laughs> Good news, it hasn't blown up yet. Next step, we can get this motor pulled, but that's not tonight. It's for another night. Hillbilly's up top, I'm gonna let him down. We're gonna go home. We're gonna really sleep on this and come back tomorrow and make a decision. I'm already voting, I'm gonna run the motor and... I think you should run the other one because Case rallies his part and he's never had his scatter. So here's the deal. I've ran this LS since 2015. I know her. I know what she can do for me. Never once has it scattered. Never once has it failed me for internal reasons. It has lost a camshaft multiple times, it's had issues multiple times. I've melted it down, but it's never come apart. It's never locked up tight. Love you. So, it is tomorrow. I don't care what Robbie says, I'm getting that other motor. We're not taking the chances of this motor, the one only time that it would blow up and cause him to fail, we're not letting it be against this sh in this show. Because we know how bummed out and sad and depressed he'll be if he doesn't get to do what he want, has wanted to do since he started, and that's go against Gumby and destroy Gumby. Well, his first time doing it, we're not gonna have a motor fail on him. Brand new motor. Ready. The motor is now ready for him to see. So that way it will win him over to run this one and not that one. Okay, so I'm taking a little break from the derby car, coming back to the Bronx Star. The high pressure line, it moves in and out. It's not supposed to, it's wore out. I'm replacing the pump because steering would come and go and it got to the point where I would have to rev it to the moon just to turn it and then the next day you'd jump in it, start it and power steering was there. I'm going to change the power steering pump and hope for the best that that fixes it using the new Snap-on pulley puller tool that Robbie got from Snap-on. Pull the pulley off, and the pump is ready to come out. There's the power steering pump. Now I want to get the new one. Now I want to get the new one installed. Put the new uh, hose on there. Fill it up, and see what it does. There's the brand new power steering pump. I've already hooked the return line up. I gotta go find one more hose clamp to get the rubber return to the metal return. And then I can start putting it all back together. Snug them up so I can put the pulley on. Okay, so I got the power string pump in, lines all hooked up and fluid in it. Now I'm gonna start it and bleed the air out of the system. Just got the power string pump put on. It improved a little bit, but I think it needs a new gearbox, so I'll get one of those and get it put on, but that's for another day. I gotta get back working on the derby car. Good morning! We got a derby car to build. So we've got a transmission cooler, a gas tank, battery, shifter, and a steering column to pull out of this, and the motor. We're not pulling the motor. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Maybe another day. We're not running this motor. I'm not letting you do it. If I have to, I'll put a cup of sugar down the carburetor so you can't. Oh, so he'll, so you'll ruin my motor rather than let me ruin it. I brought the motor in, unpalted it, oh that's the motor we're running. What? Just look at it. You don't understand. Let me show you something. This is why I'm skeptical to run this in this show, because I have to use this motor to beat some people. What's $9,600 plus $5,500? That is $15,100 for an engine to go and derby it. You must not have your eye fully on the prize. I know there's only one way to know if you can run it or not. How's that? Just do it. We gotta hear it run. Okay. Hillbilly, 
Yeah. Get the fuel tank out of that. I like that idea. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna hook some power up to it, starter on it. We're gonna see if we can get this thing to start. Then we're gonna listen to it. And then that'll tell me if we're gonna run it or not. All right, so I'm gonna get the battery box out and I'm gonna go stick it on a charger. Got this fancy schmancy battery box. I'm gonna pull this transmission cooler out. So we literally just use hydraulic pressure. And it goes through a cooler and a fan that keeps your transmission cool. I'm getting my head stuck. I'm trying to get the fuel tank out. We can test fire that motor. Since Robbie won't listen to me and his wife, the motor's gonna to have to win him over. I just gotta get this throttle bracket taken off and then the throttle pedal and brake assembly can come right out. So that's the last thing besides the steering column that's gotta come out. That seatbelt. But the last important thing. Seatbelt's the most important thing. On a derby car, we built what's called a slip, a slip steering column. So it has a hex style rod that slips inside that contraption. And when it bends, you still have steering. We're getting these headers unduct taped. It's got oil in it. We're not gonna run it with coolant, so we're not gonna run it very long. But this engine is designed to run with no coolant. I don't know. I don't know how long. Yeah. I don't know how long, and I don't want to find out. These Collier Performance Racing engines are the best of the best. Do you think there's a warranty on Derby Car motors? <laughs> yeah, the second it comes off this pallet, the warranty is void. So it'll sit on the pallet and not in the car, because they never let that pallet. Do you think it'd work that way? I think so. Should I worry about shrinking them? No. Well, this is going to be the ignition switch. This will be bolted to the positive with this, just like that. Twist the red and yellow together, and that puts power to the distributor. You take the orange wire and go like that, and it should go, we hope. So we done do go and plug that in, this and that to there, and we're going to ground it, and we're, yeah, it's gonna vroom, vroom, vroom. Is that what you said? Sure. Basically what we're doing is we are hooking everything up that's important so that we can see if this thing even runs. Actually, I really just want to see what it sounds like. That's the truth. We've got our harness that we're gonna make shift onto here. We're just gonna use the purple. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's the ground. Now we need to put our ground wire on here. So let's grab the battery. Let's see if, Let's see if it goes vroom vroom. I know that you're really, really worried about this motor and spending a lot of money, but if it won't last against four cars, how is it gonna last against like 12 in a heat? If I wreck it, if I ruin it, can I buy another one? Yeah. Okay. Game on. <laughs> Ready? Right. Let's see if we have a fuel pump. Okay, let's do it. Oh, let's, all right, we're gonna crank it over with no power to the distributor yet. We wanna get the oil flowing. Ready? Fire in the hole, Johnson. Nope. What did we do wrong? We're gonna make sure it's getting fuel. Okay, we're getting fuel. I'm gonna tighten this back up. Now, I don't wanna, I have air plugs in my hand. I'm not gonna wear them yet because I wanna fill this. You Can't like fill it in your chest? I wanna be able to fill it and hear it and be in tune with the engine and then I'll put the earplugs in. Okay, let's crank it over, no distributor. Cool, so we just wanted to get a little bit of oil pumping because it sat all winter. Now we're gonna see if it'll start. Distributor? Distributor. Distributor. Hot. Go pump. Cranky. <laughs> it sounds a lot like the LS. I don't like it because I love it. Okay, it's time to put your plugs in. We're gonna rev this up. We're gonna see what it sounds like. This is comparable to the LS. It could be better. Sounds a lot like it. It runs super good. The cool thing about Collier Performance, this motor showed up in this pallet and you, you see what we just did. It starts, it runs, it's timed, it's tuned. It's ready to go to the moon. We're gonna take it there. Distributor, fuel pump, fire! <laughs> Anything could make me as happy as my wife. 
but it does. I love you. Don't tell Demery. Yeah, don't. Here, here's the problem with this new camera. So here's the problem with this new camera. This right here doesn't get Whoa. to be seen that much. I just want to focus in on the two most important things in my life right now. That and that. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> All right, you guys heard it first. She loves it. All right, this is it. This is the motor we're gonna run in that there Durfee car. 383 stroker, built by Jeff Collier. This guy knows his stuff. I'm super pumped. I can't wait to hit Gumby with the 383. I mean, I'd love to do it with the LS, but we're gonna get the LS fixed. We're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna do the smart thing, and we're gonna get our investment fixed so that we can go break it again. We're gonna let this cool down a little bit, disconnect everything, and then we're gonna start putting all the stuff in the car. We do need to finish getting a few more things out of this. We got the rear end, the front tires. We're gonna get this car out of here, go put it around back. I'm excited. This just gave me like a new lease on life. Oh, I wish everybody could experience that. It's amazing. So I'm gonna cut out the shifter plate where we had the shifter mounted. We'll get that to where we can put it in the new car. So I'm gonna pull the shifter plate out. Hillbilly's gonna work on the rear end. Um, I'll hurry and do that so we can lift it up. We've got the front wheels off. We're just dropping the rear tires with the rear end. Get that out of here. We'll move the collier. I'm so excited to run that engine. It's gonna be exciting. You can thank me and your wife for that. No, the engine spoke to me and rattled my soul and said, run me up the derby. All right, so thank you, Hillbilly and my wife, my beautiful wife, Demery. It was mainly that. just me. It was mainly her and him. But look at that. <laughs> we like that camera. But I like it when she's holding the GoPro because then I can just turn it around and look at her beautiful face. See this right here? I am so excited for my new nut and bolt supply bin. We are getting the Mac Daddy. We've got all the bolts and all the nuts and all the things right here on the pallet. You guys are gonna see Andy the Bolt Guy coming out here in a couple of weeks. He's gonna be setting this up for us. I don't think I've ever been so excited for anything in my life except for that 83 Collier and my wife and with the nut and bolt supply bin. That's a big one. I'm excited for it. Hey, uh, why are you making so many weird noises? Because it sucks to get all like heat, hot, hot, and jiggy. This bolt's not lying. Come out. I need a pry bar. It's like something's still holding it in place. It should fall down more. It's not going on. Ugh. This is being a pain in the butt. You, come here. Who? High lift, come here. What's a high lift? High lift jack, come here. He's not listening. Where's your son? He'd bring it here. Oh, he would. You're lifting up the whole car. What is stopping it from pivoting? I think I got it. It's about to fall out. Maybe not. Maybe I lied. Yeah, maybe I lied. So we might have to take the chain along, hook it to here, run a chain from the front bumper, back, hook it to that, and well, let's do it real quick. Get it to roll. Hillbilly is getting a chain along, and we're gonna roll this rear end forward and try to get a little bit of pressure off of those upper control arms. You think your motor's strong enough? Yeah. Okay. If it starts to bow, stop. You could even go right to the frame rail. So what we're trying to do is actually rotate this rear end forward so that that bolt will come out. What the heck? It's like it's twisted. It's like this thing's been wrecked or something. No. Come jack this up a little. Last jack time I jacked it up, it moved the whole move car. Racks, but just moved the whole car. Okay, right there. That's all. Now go pull that chain along forward. I think you're gonna need to go to that frame rail over here to pull it that way, kind of. What are you doing? Just get the bolt out. I'm watching. Is he doing anything? Yeah, it's almost out. Got it. Next dilemma. What's that? Getting the spud wrench out now. Pry bar. Always something. All right, let's do the other side. Okay, let me pull this arm out. Aha! This crisscross applesauce sitting is not for me. 
don't know how hillbilly I always feel, but... Maybe we need to bind it up on this other direction. Might move now. So we readjusted the chain along. We got the rear end shifted to where Hillbilly can try to beat that bolt out. Just beat it. We've got this upper control arm undone. We've got the lower undone. <laughs> Success is mine. Hey, it's gonna fall forward. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Very unsafe. Do not do this at home. Okay, well. Okay, we're good right there. This is what happens when grade eight bolts get bent inside metal sleeves. They become a nightmare. What we've determined is that the bolt is bent inside the sleeve. So we're gonna cut the head of the bolt off. We're gonna beat the bolt in this way because we got it to move. All right. There's our culprit, bent right at the end. So what it is, it's a metal. Yeah. Oh, wow. She's good to go again. Oh yeah, look at that. Same thing. I'm gonna cut the head off of this, put it in the vise, and we're gonna beat that bolt out. We're gonna beat it into oblivion. You don't want it to come out. Where is my... I think I need my drrrr. What's your drrrr? Literally the same thing. You're never getting that bolt out. Seriously. What is wrong with this stuff? You know, some days you're the dog, but today I'm the hydrant. It's like not working. <laughs> Six hours to pull a bolt. Technically, we could have left this side on. All right, brackets off. What a nightmare. All right, so we got about that much of it out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna heat the outside sleeve, and as soon as I put heat to it and get it red, hot, that center will come right out. All right, while she's red hot, we're gonna ditch this bolt. I don't feel like it's, it's going. Out. Yeah, she's almost out. We totally ruined the sleeve though. Bada bing! Bada boom! Now it's stuck. Uh oh. <laughs> you know what? Like I said, some days you're the dog, today we're just the hybrid. There's that little stuck bolty poo. We're setting the car down on a cart. It's a body cart that we built so that we can wheel this thing out of here. It's gonna swing around. All right, so we've got the car up on the lift. We're gonna drop this rear end out and get it ready to put in our Postal Mopar rear end. It literally took all day long to get those bolts out. So we're a little bit behind, but you know what? We're not doing too bad. The other car, we've got it all stripped. We've got our motor of choice. We've got a transmission that's being shipped to us from Summit Racing. All right, so Hillbilly's got all the bolts out of the rear end. We're gonna lift it and hopefully the rear end stays. We need to just get these control arms and shocks unbolted and this rear end will be done. This is the best safety goggle glasses things I've ever seen. Any control arm down. All right, so we've just about got the back end of this car completely stripped out. We're gonna hurry and get the shocks pulled and that's gonna be it as far as we can go until we get a few more things. We're a week away from the Derby. Think we're gonna make it? We always do. We always do. There's two bolts on the top for the shock. It has a bar that runs through with two holes on the outside and the bolts run up through it to hold it in place. Yeah. All right, so as always, we appreciate you guys. If you enjoy this video, go check out this one.